Hey guys, in this video, we'll be answering all the questions that we're getting from Instagram. So any more questions related to plastic surgery, awake breast augmentation, awake liposuction, make sure to leave them in the comments below. And if you want to see what we do in surgery, make sure to subscribe to our channel because we put it all out there. What kind of anesthesia is used for these procedures? What type of anesthesia do we use for our procedures? Well, it depends on the type of procedure we're doing. If we're doing liposuction or tummy tuck, we're using jumescent local anesthesia. Basically, it's fluid that has lidocaine in it or numbing medicine, and uh, we use that to numb the area to do the liposuction and the skin resection. If we're doing a breast case, we're doing a combination of tumescent anesthesia and a block. What would you do if it didn't really work and patient could still feel it? Okay. What would we do if the numbing medicine didn't work and patients are still feeling? So patient is awake, so the patients and I were collaborating basically. So uh, if I am in an area where the patient is feeling the tenderness, then they will tell me and I will add a little bit more numbing medicine. We never had any case where patients were like, oh my God, it's still tender despite adding numbing medicine. It really is very simple. I mean, you get to an area, we at this point, we've done hundreds of these cases. I would know whenever I get to the tissue where it's not very well numb, I can tell by just looking at that tissue. And then most of the times I'm preemptively numbing the area before the patient is saying anything. That being said, there are certain areas during a tummy tuck around the belly button. Uh, there's a lot of perforators there. Sometimes patients can feel that. Uh, and then we numb it. And then we take those perforators down. And if they had multiple C-section or scars kind of above that mons area, they tend to feel that little bit more than other areas. So we numb that area more so that they have much less sensitivity in those areas. Can you do an explant awake? Can you do breast implant removal or explant awake? And the short answer is yes. We do breast explant awake, we do breast revision awake, implant exchange awake, breast augmentation awake, breast augmentation with a lift awake. Pretty much any breast surgery can be done awake. Does it cost more than sedated breast augmentation? A common question we get asked about is cost, whether doing these procedures awake is there a cost saving uh, to the patient. Uh, and the answer is a little bit kind of tricky because when we do it awake, it takes more time and it takes more expertise to be able to do that. So on the uh, but at the same time, we don't have the cost of anesthesia being done. Uh, so that averages out between the uh, complexity of the case and the uh, challenging uh, technical skills that's needed. It requires, it costs more, uh, but at the same time, you take the cost of anesthesia, but for the patient, it's more or less the same. Do you wear compression? Uh, absolutely, I wear compression uh, every day, especially on the days I'm doing surgeries. I'm actually uh, wearing compression today and uh, I just finished the tummy tuck and, uh, and I feel by wearing compression, my legs uh, feel better. Is the recovery time still the same? With awake, is the recovery time after awake plastic surgery the same as being under the general anesthesia? We've noticed, we've because we've done uh, plastic surgery under the general anesthesia in the wake, and we've noticed that when we started doing awake plastic surgery, the recovery time has been much faster for patients. And uh, part of the reason is patients don't have to recover from general anesthesia, so they immediately recover is much faster. Now, to go back to heavy lifting, heavy workout, it's still the same like under the general anesthesia, it's that four to six weeks. But patients tend to get back to kind of regular activity uh, within the next day or so. Do implants lift the breast a significant amount or is a lift also required? That's a great question. If a, the breast tissue or the nipple position is borderline, then going with an implant 
that fits the breast tissue is all what you need to be able to lift that breast uh, to where it needs to be and the nipple areola complex. However, if the amount of sagginess is more pronounced where the nipple is pointing down or the nipple position is sitting below the fold, at that point an implant by itself is not enough, then you will need a lift to centralize the nipple areola complex over the breast tissue. That being said though, it's your body, it's your decision. We've, we've done patients where she, where the patient doesn't care about the nipple areola complex, her husband doesn't care about the nipple areola complex, she's just looking for upper pole fullness and cleavage. And she understands this is exactly what she wants and she really doesn't care about that. And if, if, that, if you fit in that scenario, I mean, that's okay. You can still do an implant and down the line, you can always do a lift. That's it. Yeah, Good that was job. Great. Thank you so much for following along with us today. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions about what we do, make sure you leave them below and we're happy to answer any questions you have. Mm -hmm.